there are still reports that vast numbers of care home workers are still refusing for some reason to take the to have the vaccine. Now, they've probably got problems with vaccine. They're frightened of the vaccine. They shouldn't be frightened of the vaccine. They should be take getting the vaccine because that will enable more that would enable people probably to visit. But if the care home staff haven't had the vaccine, that is a real problem. Mm. And if the, if they are if they are scared about it, they've got to be given some form of education programme to realise the only way we can get out of this mess is if everybody has the vaccine. Uh, Jonathan, uh, Andrew's uh, newspaper this morning is, is striking a, a pretty positive tone with regards to how we find our way out of lockdown regarding the leisure and hospitality industry. Uh, restaurants and pubs could be open to two households able to mix inside by May. The rule of six will apply indoors by June. Claims venues may be broadly normal by July. I mean, all of these things are very positive. It's the sort of light that we're all holding on to. Mm. But talking about grievous mistakes that have been made by the government, we've also got one of our correspondents at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital this morning in Birmingham. And NHS trusts are saying that the, the stress on the NHS and beds mm. is going to take six to eight weeks before that comes down considerably enough for things to get under control. This urge for all of us to find a way out and for Boris Johnson to deliver this roadmap out has to be balanced, doesn't it, with the, the impact that it could still have. Everybody is so concerned that Easter and the mixing at Easter or potentially what we could do at Easter could become a new Christmas and we saw the devastation that the mixing over the festive period had. Yeah, we did see the mess that we got into over Christmas. We, we've got, this has got to be the last lockdown. I mean, the lockdown is, has been terrible, particularly for children, as we were saying a few moments ago. So we've got to be driven by the data, not dates. We've got to proceed with caution. Vaccination does change the landscape, but we've got to lock in the gains of vaccination, if you like, by making sure that we ease out of lockdown cautiously. We do everything we can to stop the spread of the virus. But, <clears throat> excuse me, our NHS is still in a in a, in a desperate state, it's not just the pressures of COVID, which are over, have overwhelmed many of our hospitals. It's the fact now that you've got, you've got over 220,000 people waiting beyond 12 months for an operation or for treatment. Well, a year ago, it was 1,600. You figures say that could be 10 million by April. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we've got people waiting and waiting for not just operations like knee replacements and hip replacements, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, they were even cancelling children's cancer operations, can you believe? That's how desperate the situation is in our National Health Service. It's not just COVID, by the way. It's the fact that if you don't fund your NHS for years, then they're exposed when something like this hits. We're short of the nurses. They've cut beds over the last 10 years, lost around 15,000 beds. So we went into this crisis with the NHS run down, and now we're seeing people waiting longer for life-saving treatment. Meanwhile, a whole group of people, 1.7 million of them, have suddenly found themselves having to shield for six weeks. They come into the shielding category. Um, the new criteria that puts them in that includes ethnicity and social deprivation where you live. Um, it, it seems extraordinary when a lot of this research was published in October that they should be shielding. It's only now, Kevin, that actually they've been put in this category. Yeah, and Kate, about uh, half that 1.7 million haven't been vaccinated, so they'll now be bumped up the priority list. And they're on top of 2.3 million others who are shielding. But it's because now the government is recognising through an Oxford University study that deprivation, your occupation, your income, uh, your um, ethnic background, these can be huge factors on whether or not you're vulnerable to infection, uh, serious uh, ill health and death. We know that some, uh, and, and these figures have been around for a long time from the um, from the Office for National T Statistics, there are some people in occupations who are twice as likely to die as others because they can't sit at home, work from home, they can't use Zoom, they've got to go to work, but often in manual jobs, in uh, public transport, in shops, in, in factories. And the, I think the government has just been very, very slow to react on this. And it is a, it's another criticism, giving huge, huge praise uh, in, in parts of the vaccine programme. But we're now vaccinating in big, big chunks, often age-related. A more sophisticated system would have looked at those people who were most vulnerable, including those people who have to, have to go to work, uh, uh, live in crowded accommodation, uh, don't have a lot of money, so... They, they can't, in a way, shield from the virus, and they should have probably been vaccinated earlier than, say, people like me.
Yeah, Andrew, I, I wonder how the government can, can sort of defend this because it seems extraordinary for those people, that 1.7 million people, the 800 and something thousand that are suddenly being rushed up the list. This will be a real worry this morning, won't it? We're nearly a year into the pandemic from when we went first into the, the previous lockdown in March, uh, whatever it is. We're not far away from that date and suddenly they're being told, actually, oh, it's a bit awkward, but you're much more vulnerable than we thought. Well, while we've, we've known anecdotally that if you're obese or if you're in an ethnic minority community, you may be potentially more at risk. This is this why the government has moved now. now. This is based on a study done at Oxford University or done in Oxford. It's just been concluded. They said they've taken this long because they've got to get their, uh, their research properly, properly uh, uh, concluded. So it's a very comprehensive, detailed study that's just been released from Oxford. And um, it does mean that those 800,000 have not had the vaccine. If that means they can't go to work because of this study, at least we know they'll be able to get statutory sick pay. Mm. There will be help for them. But it does seem odd that it's taken so long. But look, I'm not a scientist. They're brilliant. They're doing brilliant work in Oxford. If the study's just been concluded, it's just been concluded. You can't blame the government for that, I don't think.